three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh**. He just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Here we go. Another round of dumb football questions on the O-Line Committee. The only show in America where an idiot fan like myself can chop it up with two former NFL offensive linemen and ask dumb football questions in a safe space without, well, you guys do clown me, but that's fine. It's all, it's all welcome it's here. All Alex Boone, all Jeremiah Searles, and Phil Mackey here. Um, yeah, dude, I got three. People are sending these comments in. We love it, man. You guys have us up to, as of the recording of this episode, just under 2,000 subscribers in our first, I don't know, three weeks of pumping out mm. these episodes. So thanks to the, to the blossoming audience of the O-Line Committee. Listen. It's it's a club. It's a, it's a privileged club to be a part of. But we invite all. We're an exclusive. We're an exclusive. At, what is it? Exclusive, inclusive, whatever it may be. We love all people that love O line. We don't discriminate. So yeah. true. Yeah, and if, if like uh, big yeah. boy football, we're here. Yeah, if you like except for if, specialists, I can't do kickers or punters. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. Yeah, I just, what about long snappers? Long snappers? No, no. I can't yeah, I'll, I'll claim that. a long snapper. They're in there with us on field goal. I mean, they tell us to help them, and they just hold on and usually <laughs> fall on your leg. They don't they're do in anything. There. They're in yeah. there. Have hey, you guys ever don't had do to anything. be a long snapper? Until no. It's really, until you they don't do anything until they yeah. don't, until you miss them. We were playing yeah. Green Bay in 2016 or 17. I cannot remember. It was with the Vikings. All of a sudden, we come out for a PAT. Here comes David Morgan, our backup tight end. And I was like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm snapping. Kevin McDermott shaved his finger off on punt. I was like, who gets hurt on punt? And so all of a sudden, like, that's, they see a backup snapper, so they're gearing themselves up a little bit more because they know the operation is going to be a tick slower, and it's just – they move the guy. The guy comes up a little bit. That's not. Oh gosh, it's a nightmare. You don't need them until you need them, and then it's so like, true. oh, I, I miss, I miss, I miss my snapper. You're right. I shouldn't talk about those guys. I, I played with Phil Dawson. He was great. Joe Nedney, phenomenal dude. I mean, those guys were great. And you're right. You don't miss them until you miss them, and then you're like, man, I really, I really do miss that. And I feel like they get treated like us sometimes. Like oh yeah. People don't love them until they're gone or something yes. goes wrong, and then they look at them like, hey, you got us, right? <laughs> okay. Well, it's Woo! always like if you miss the PAT, you miss it, be like, oh, how was the snap? It's like the snap got there. You just missed it. But it's always like, oh, snap was a little high, right? Like, oh, wow, what a great job. A little high. I mean, it was eight inches instead of six or whatever it might be. <laughs> it is funny. Yeah, you guys, I feel like especially interior offensive linemen, un- guards are unheralded. You know, centers can be. You really don't notice specialists, interior offensive linemen until something goes haywire. Correct. You know, guards yeah. don't matter until they do. And kickers don't one? matter until they do. Do you remember a couple years ago on Monday night, John Madden when he was, or not John Madden, but uh, John Gruden when he was doing it? Remember when Oakland was playing and they lost their long snapper in the first quarter? Mm-hmm. And Gruden was like, dude, this is going to be a rough night for the. And they ended up shanking so many punts that caused them like turnovers. And- they got one blocked. Yeah, like you're not kidding, dude. If you miss somebody like that, like a, if you if you're called a specialist, you're probably important, right? There's a reason they call them specialists. Nobody else is really doing your job. I mean, they're important for about a million dollars. Once you get once you once you cost more than that, they usually cut you and find someone uh, else. <laughs> unless you're like the leg from Baltimore, that who sings opera. Who, Justin, Justin Tucker. Tucker, dude, is hilarious. savage. Has Justin right. Tucker kind of graduated into like respect among all football oh, players territory totally. at this point? Oh, absolutely. Okay. You're yeah. you're at the Phil Dawson of your career. The uh, I'm trying to think. The Adam Vinatieri hit that. Dude, yeah. By the way, you want to talk about a guy who just amazing person. Like you see him on TV, and you're like, dude, seems really cool. And then you meet him, and you're like, holy shit, that guy is awesome. <laughs> Vinatieri was that guy. Every year at the PA meetings, if you like, he was like the oldest, grayest thing you saw, and you were like, is that guy an administrator? Like, no, <laughs> dude, what is that guy? Oh, is no, that I'm Michael a, McDonald? Who is that? Yeah, I thought guy? it was Ira Fishman. My bad. My, my bad, Ira. Like, just mess right? And then all of a sudden, you sit down and talk to him, and he's like, he just gets so animated and fired up about all this stuff. He's like, you know what? I am going to say something. And then, like, he turned into dad mode in the meeting. You were like, this guy's great. Well, I mean, I heard stories about, and I mean, it's no, like, Matt Prater from Denver used to, like, oh, show psycho. up with, like, a bucket of beers the night before the game, and they just go psycho. bang 60 yards. <laughs> Just a monster. Dude, some of them are super, super funny. But then you get ones, and I'm not going to name any names, that spend way too much time in the weight room and not enough time kicking a ball. Oh. And it just drives me nuts. Like, I'm going to be do those, do those kickers usually miss 27 yarders? I can't. A little bit left remember. in the cold, maybe? Slightly yeah. left? I'm, I'm like the most. Think about this. Most of the specialists that I've met were the most out-of-shape <laughs> guys in the world. No muscle. None. <laughs> like, none. 
And they yeah. went out and they could bang a ball. And you were like, God, this guy's incredible. And then you'd meet this kid that would just come out and try and like take the spot, super yoked, like, yo, what's up? I'm Trevor. Kid. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, you're not. You're here to leave. You're going to be gone. I can tell you, I know gone. we're not naming any names with him, but uh, the aforementioned wide left 27 yarder. Sure. I remember I was watching that game with like 15 or 20 people who were celebrating, a bunch of Vikings fans who are, I mean, uh, mystery team fans mystery who were. Team. Who are they, yeah, the, the, they're just marching out, ready to win this game, and I don't know, man. It was like it was like The Exorcist or like Amityville. Like pick your horror movie. Something came over me, and everyone's celebrating, and I can just remember Tunnel Vision staring at the TV as they're walking out, and I said out loud, "Oh my god, <laughs> something's gonna happen here," and everyone looks over like. Quit being a buzzkill, Mackie. I said, no, dude, something's going to happen here. It's the Vikings, and it's it's a key kick in the playoff. <laughs> sure enough, man. Yeah, Poor that guy. wasn't a fun one. It was like he had never kicked a ball in his life, dude. And even you know what's even crazier was? Uh, remember Prefer, the special teams coach, who shout out to Coach Prefer, one of the greatest Savage. ever. I mean, just a total. The only guy that I think ever got crazier than me on game day was Prefer. Like, they went out and they were like, dude, don't go. Don't stand near him. Don't no. walk around him. Don't you even make I kind of, I was like, dude, nobody scares me. And they were like, just wait. And this dude tried to headbutt me one time when I was what? coming off the field. And he like grabbed my mask and came in. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Because I will come back at you. And he was like, I know. I was like, dude, okay, seriously, Prefer was stop. the best. Prefer was, was the, the absolute best. He used to talk crap to the kickers on kickoff. Like, it was so funny. He'd be like, give us one. You know you want to. Just give us one. And, like, one time we were playing Robbie Gold with the Bears, and he, like, kicked it, like, and it hit the pylon, so it was, like, barely a touchback. He's like, you lucky effer. You so lucky. You lucky <laughs> effer. Like, just dogging. crash. It was so funny. I love Prefer. Dude, he was the he, best. He, he was a Navy pilot. Yeah. And that's why he was so like, – he was talking to us. He was a helicopter pilot, and he would tell us about his landings and stuff. He was one of the greatest guys. But I'm telling you, man. The guys that the specialists that I was around that were really the best at it were the most chill dudes. They were just the calmest. They would have laughed at a guy like Prefer, but instead you can tell the ones that are super uptight around him were just not going to yeah. make well, it. Well, dude, they're they're golfers with cleats. Like you have to be chill. You can't they're walk all, up. They're on all them. scratch golfers too. Just all of them. All and they're of always them. practicing their swing. Like, so are we going at noon? <laughs> yeah. We... One? Do you want to eat lunch, free lunch here? We can eat lunch here. I got the beers in the car. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah. These, these grotesque animals, they have to stay all day. Yeah. Like, they would laugh at us. They'd be like, hey, enjoy being here till seven, losers. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting ready to go to meetings. You see three cars pull out of the parking lot. It was like kicker, punter, long snapper. Like, Here's the other problem, right? It was like Porsche, Range Rover. You were like, yeah. God, I hate these guys. <laughs> you, you're 12, 11, 13. Dude, Amazing. Joe Nenny, the year I got there, was year 20. Year 20. I was like... I love you and I hate you. Greatest guy. I mean, these guys were awesome. You, we should call some of them on sometime. Well, God, do you remember? So, I mean, Gary Anderson. I think I, he might still hold the NFL points record. Gary Anderson started Ooh, kicking in like the seventies, and then he's the one. So single uh, bar. His his sing, single bar. Yep. Amazing. Grandfathered in. Uh, his only miss in nineteen ninety eight. It, it was a perfect season, thirty six for thirty six, I believe. And then he missed wide left in the NFC Championship game. Uh, he was the Viking kicker, but I think he kicked until he was 46 years old. So basically, you start the season with a kicker that can make 50 yarders, and then if he fails, you bring in Gary Anderson, and then you you punt or go for it if it's inside like or outside 42 yards, but automatic. Uh, I love it. Anyhow, I got three dumb football questions for you guys. Uh, a couple of these are from the YouTube audience, and then uh, I, I think one of them's from me. I got a list here. So Zach Northern Scold via YouTube. And by the way, just drop your comments in, and we'll make a list. We'll get to them this summer. Dumb football questions. This is a safe space. How much do players actually pay attention to what the media says? Depends on the player. It depends on the player. And depends on what's being said. I mean, no. I I, So I know guys. I will not name names with this one. But I know guys (laughs) that would come in from the game. And I do mean straight from the game, still in their pads. Pull up Twitter and search their name. Not just like their ats, not just someone that like tweeted at them, 
but actually type in their last name to the Twitter bar, be like, and then see all the comments. Be like, oh, oh man, can you believe like, this? It, it just start like, Is and I'm like, real? dude, take your tape off, go take a shower. <laughs> like, you're gonna start your, you're gonna start your afternoon or your evening like this. Like, it's just gonna be a downward spiral, yeah. right? And like, so certain players, and then there's other guys that are like, ah, I don't even look at it at all. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me. I don't like. It's so dependent, and some guys can handle it, and some guys absolutely can't. So like some guys find their whole identity in what is being said about well, it's them. and it's way harder. I mean, think about now compared to 10, 15, 20 years ago, mm-hmm. where maybe in the late 90s, you'd you'd finish the game and then the next morning you'd pick up the newspaper and see what the local columnist guy was yeah. writing about you. Now it's like you can just search through and see what normal people and fans are yelling at you on social media. So at the I feel like the communication megaphone I mean, is just I, in your face if you want I had, it to be. I had someone message my wife after Dallas 2016. We had a failed we had a failed two-point two point conversion, conversion on Thursday night. First of all, I jumped off sides because our stupid center didn't snap the football stupid. on the right count. So I get called, stupid. right? False start, number 77 or whatever, 78. So, right? You feel the booze of USB. Boo! And so then next play, we back it up. We go. We miss the conversion. Alex gets a hands to the face call at left guard, and so we come in the locker room and like I'm not even gonna pay attention because I know it's gonna happen. Someone messaged my wife on Facebook and was like, "I hope your husband dies in the car ride home." You, <laughs> what? what an effing loser! And like Dude, my wife what? showed me that, and I was like, "Wow, that guy really hates me." Yeah. Like p- fans will go and like it doesn't phase me. I could care less what people said, but like there's some stuff like that would have set certain dudes like completely off the edge. For sure. yeah, you would have jumped a little bit before the light turned green, so it is possible that a yeah. car could have t-boned I you. I mean, I guess sure. I just like a quick trigger, you know. If that's Marcus Lawrence, wow, you dude, what, what is too. wrong with people? <laughs> I think that I think Mackie, you're right though. I think the social media has made this way way more than it needs to be. And I'm going to be honest with you. Jeremiah knows me. I couldn't give a shit what anyone thinks. As long as you're not standing next to me, I don't even care what you think in general. Like, you don't matter. It doesn't matter in the moment. Guys would go back, like Jeremiah says, I saw guys at halftime checking Twitter, checking their PFF. I mean, I saw everything. Oh, and that's PFF. when we were like, dude, this is not the same game we signed up for. And it's when or when a coach would come in and be like, ah, oh, somebody put this in my locker. And you would like slam a bunch of clips up about how we <laughs> suck. And it was like, all right, well, why'd you slam it in my locker? Like, I, <laughs> you're pissed someone did it to you, so now you're going to go do it to me. Like, now you're just really pissing me off. And at the same time, <laughs> all these people don't know what we're trying to really do. They think they do. They're constantly telling us, oh, we know what you're doing. You have no goddamn idea what we're doing behind these walls. There's times when we would come out and the coach would be like, we want it to look like this, but we need to make it run like this. So people would be like, oh, you guys are trying to we're like, we're not trying to do that. Stop. We're not stupid. We're trying to set something up for later. We're trying to do something for later. Or at the same time, I know I got my ass kicked. Why do I need to go listen to 55,000 people tell me I got my ass kicked? I'm going to hear about it from the head man. The head man is going to come down and stomp my ball sack out tomorrow <laughs> in front of everybody. You think I want to have my grandmother like tweeting at me you suck like i know i'm not an idiot like i figured this out but that's why i was like why are you guys so mad i will say PF- pff has changed some of that too certain guys really live oh. and die by pff because first this? of all collinsworth is a genius for pff yeah. it mean, gave the, just... the idiot fan something to grade a metric off a player that they think is gospel Right, like PFF grades are a joke, and I might get in trouble for saying that, but I don't care. I think they're they the are. biggest joke when, especially when it comes to offensive line play. Like, I just don't think it has any metric. But there's certain guys that get so caught up in what PFF says about them that they find again, it makes them start questioning what they're actually being taught, what they're actually doing, because public perso- persona or public perception and public pressure then starts driving guys, and that's where you start seeing guys really start to tank. They're about mid year. Yeah. And- I'm probably going to get in a lot of trouble for saying this, but I know that there's a lot of teams that follow PFF and Mm -hmm. they'll actually start cutting guys based on PFF. And that's why I have a real problem with it. I have a problem with someone who claims to know what we're doing when these walls are completely locked at all times. I know you don't know what we're doing. And now you're getting guys cut because you're throwing out some stupid grade that some guy who probably never played the game is telling me, oh, this is a win. Why is it a win? 
Why is it a win? Just tell me why it's a win. Well, because, uh, you know, he didn't He touch affected Strowman. the throwing lane, so right. therefore it was a pressure. It's like, oh, you know what? Let me just miraculously move his hand then. You know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing too much out here. Listen to you, bitter, you. you bitter boomers right now. I love PFF. It gives an <laughs> idiot like do. me. Of oh, I can do. I can, now I can be outraged over a left guard performance. I told performance. you it was the tight end. I told you it was the tight end's <laughs> fault on this play. Even PFF wrote it down right here. Look, I can see it right here. Like, dude, the fact that I would hear GMs were reading that. I was disgusted. I was it's, like, dude. See, it's not GMs, though. It's owners. It's owners that read it because owners are so worried about what the people around them that put the asses in the seats think about. Right? So if PFF sees and they're like, oh, this guy's trash, 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 like they're going to immediately in their mind be like, well, he must be trash because everyone that I hear and everyone I talk to that reads PFF thinks he's trash. Right? Like those are the type of things that I don't like about PFF. Now, Agreed. there's certain Instead, things I that just... I do. But overall, I'm not a big PFF fan. You know, it's uh, while Next you're talking question. here, I just happened to <laughs> stumble into Alex Boone's PFF career grades <laughs> oh, here. Jesus you know, I will. You know, I agree. PFF wildly incorrect because in 2012 they had Alex as one of the highest graded guards in the NFL. Joke of a website. Joke of a website. I There's still no don't way. stand for it. I know what my coaches <laughs> told me that year. I remember what they were saying at the end of every game. I didn't need to go to a website to go, hey. How did I do today? I just go to the guy who's running the whole damn show and go, hey, I was that for a day, huh? Huh? You wouldn't lie. They don't lie to you. It's like, I just don't get why guys go to that stuff when they could instead just go to the coach and be like, hey, how do you think I've been playing lately? Like, you think I'm doing well? Yeah, hey, you're doing fine. Or, hey, we need to get better at this or whatever, whatever. But they just, and, it, and to be fair, another thing is a lot of people can't take criticism. And I'm not mm. even saying in sports, I'm saying in life. I think there's so many people that are so defensive and so guarded. Just because someone throws criticism out there doesn't mean you have to accept it. Doesn't mean you have to change what you're doing if you don't believe them to be right. Do you. That's fine. But you, there's some point where it's like guys have to go and they have to search around and they're like, what is being said? I need to try and change the narrative. I need to fix this. Or I need to. It's like, dude, who gives? Who cares what these people think? We love you in here. We think you're doing great. Stop reading stupid stuff. Which uh, which of the thirty two pressures you allowed in two thousand thirteen was your favorite? Thirteen. Let's see. That was a that was a hell of a year. He doesn't remember. <laughs> he, he took too many hits. For that. He, he, it's been ten years ago now. I think. We uh, played, all right. Hey, did we play Buffalo that year? Oh uh, man, now you're gonna oh, make now me you're click asking, around. Now you're dude. asking too many questions. I don't know. We'll we'll do a we'll Except do a deeper year. dive into this. We'll, we'll oh just, don't don't think you're safe, Jeremiah. Oh, I'm We're not saying your PFF freaking hated me. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, now we see where the eggs. Is. If there was media PFF, I'd like to see where uh, old Macadat grades out here. But that's for maybe that's a business idea for another year. Yeah, players, um, okay. can, grade the, players can then grade the media hey, off their writing. To be fair, I was gonna do that one year for Pro Football Talk because they had so many like grammar errors and so many i was like in a, i was gonna start tallying them on my locker and then the, the niners came to me and they were like no don't do that don't, we're <laughs> no, not. Is it, oh I, and, looks like florio graded pretty low on this, this article is true, right I, you, I was about to like at some point some of the that's an oxford comma I, I was like dude this is out of control right and they were like remember they always have more ink than you have yeah and yep. they will yeah. always continue printing as more than you can speak. But and we're, they're like, we're not trying to piss Florio off. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I heard one of my a, a friend and colleague uh, who's a couple generations older than me in the industry once responded to a baseball player and said, "I'm going to be around longer than you are, so you know <laughs> we can can do this all we want." But okay, Spacey chimes in and says, "What's it like for an offensive lineman to pick up a fumble and run with it? Don't do it. Just Never. fall down. Just don't. Just fall down." Who was the – oh, gosh, I know his name. Newhouse. Marshall Newhouse from the – he was playing for Oakland when they fumbled and he picked it up and got helicoptered and then he fumbled the football. Like, we are not meant to carry the football. First of all, we probably have about a pound of tape on each hand, right? Like, there's no, there's nothing that – we don't have the, the, the claw, the five points of contact. Like, yeah. we were taught always, if you get on the fumble, if you have a ball, you fall straight to the ground. You cover it with as much body mass as possible. I caught a football once. We were playing Seattle in the preseason in 2017. I have one pass reception to my name. Case Keenum throws an RPO. We run in a duo play. Pops straight up in the air, and I caught it, and I got smoked. <laughs> and I was like, this is terrible. I never want to touch this ball ever again. Like, you feel it as soon as you touch it, and you kind of look up, and you have 11 eyes all running towards you. I was like, I just – I never want to do that no. ever again. <laughs> 
fix it, <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> what if he just tossed it? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, just fumble it. Just toss it to someone else. Be like, it's his problem. <laughs> Did you so ever no. pick up a football, Alex? No. Never. <laughs> no, I don't even want to touch the ball. I'm like Jeremiah. I was always taught, you are too big and too clumsy to touch that ball. Don't even <laughs> yeah. go near it. And if you, you know, the, the, the tape on, on the hands is a point that I don't think I've ever heard as a fan. And it's crazy. I mean, you guys are... You're trying to. I mean, you're you're they're hand mini fighting. Casts. They're mini yeah. casts. Like, yeah, but I, why can't they just pick it up? I mean, their hands are. <laughs> they normally don't move past here. Like they're yeah. stuck kind of here. No, I'm we not did, even kidding. We did the episode. I mean, we all don't have great fingers either. So. Yeah. Okay. This one's again, this one's from me here. Um, I'm curious because we we had a conversation last week about. I think. Uh, you guys were talking about how fun is it in the NFL and Jeremiah, you were talking about how like half, half the time you're just thinking about like, am I going to get cut? Am I, because you, you were never like a, a an affirmed mm-hmm. starter for multiple years. So my question to you guys is, do you feel as a player in the league an obligation to help younger teammates or to what extent do you feel like, okay, uh, it, the younger players in the offensive line room, I'm going to go out of my way to make them better football players and humans. Joe, I'll let you. I'll let Jeremiah go first. For, okay. I, we probably have different views on this. Um, for me, I was always I was always about helping the younger players. Um, but I will say that in order to help a younger player, you have to be prove you have to prove to me that you want help. That's the biggest thing. Like guys that come in and think that they're, they're good, they've arrived, and that they don't need any help, they're just going to make it. Those are the guys that I was like, all right, I'm not going to waste my time with you because you're not going to be here in the fall. Like you, and you can tell that within the first few weeks, right? Or if there was a guy that was a drafted player, like if he was drafted high and you knew he was going to help to contribute this year, you really tried to help those guys along because you knew they were going to play and you knew that like in order to win games, we're going to need this guy. But as far as like an obligation, there wasn't an obligation to do it. It was more along the lines of like, I want to help the guys that want to be helped. Like that was how I viewed it. And I would, I would stay late with guys. I would watch tape with guys. I would help guys become pros as long as they asked for it. Um, but I never went out of my way to just be like, oh, you're young? Come here. Come here. Let me show you the way. Because for me, I was training my replacement. But I never had a problem with, like, I'll compete with you. Like, I'll, I'll go toe-to-toe on the field with you, and I'll win and be the best man to it. But I will help you become a pro because the NFL give you so much. And it's arguably one of the reasons why I became an agent, so I can help these guys do that now, too. Alex was a little different vet. Alex, did you ever no. murder a young player <laughs> no, in cold never. blood? No, but I agree with Jeremiah. I'm not going to help anyone until they prove that they want to be helped. And then – for me to be proved, you got to show yourself a lot. Like you got to show up to workouts. You got to put the work in. I better see you taking notes. I got to hear right questions coming out of your mouth. And at the same time, Jeremiah will tell you, I'm extremely open to everybody. I am kind of guarded in the beginning just because I don't trust any of the new guys coming in. And I'm like, Jeremiah, I want to see what you're going to do before anything gets thrown in your face. Like the minute you start to go over and grab a kid's hand, like, Hey, this is how things are done here. It's like, how the hell is this kid going to learn? Right? Like you had to have him come in and shut up for a little bit. Listen. Listen more than you talk. I mean, I'm, my rookie year, dude, I didn't talk a lot because I was a very young kid on a very old, old team. And I was scared. I was like, dude, these guys could literally kill me. All of them. Like, they were psychos. And it was fun to be around them, but at the same time, you learn a lot. And then Barry Sims was actually one of the ones that took me under his wing and was like, it took a while because with Barry, he was very guarded. He was like, you're 13, but he was the same thing. Like the minute you start showing up and putting in the work, he was like, all right, Rook, you know, you're doing this wrong. I was like, oh, how, why am I doing it wrong? Oh, your foot's not supposed to look like, that. oh, thanks, Barry. Appreciate it. But it's like you had to now listen, they're going to crush you because you're the new guy, right? And they want to see how much you can handle. And at the same time, I think a lot of that is trying to see how much a guy can handle in a pressure situation because football is extremely, you are like under the most stress when you're out on the field. Mm -hmm. And you have to have these guys that are super chill. Like people are going to say things to you and they're going to say things about your mom and your wife or your girlfriend. And you got to be the calmest dude because if you throw a punch, it's going to cost all of us or it's going to cost you your job. Like there's a lot of reasons that we mess with guys. And at the same time, it's just the thing we do. And then when you get older, you can do it with the young guys. But it's it's like I remember when and I'm not going to name any names, but when I was younger, we drafted a guy early and he came in and he was kind of like, no, I'm not going to do any of this, and I'm not going to do the rookie thing, and I'm not going to – and it was like a lot of the guys were like, man, this is bullshit. 
like, dude, you need to assimilate into this room. In order to assimilate with all of us, you have to make all of us happy. And that's just kind of how it is. You're in such a unique position in your life to jump into such an elite group that they're like, we don't just let anybody into this group. You have to earn your way into this group. And the, I think the hardest time is when you're in camp for those young guys. And I don't know how Jeremiah felt, but those just like, the minute you try to help them, they feel very defensive. And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to let this go. I'm going to let the coach handle this one. He's he's better suited at this. But it's like the year three guy, the year four guy that you can pull aside and be like, hey, stupid, what are you doing? You know you can throw your hands better than that. He's like, yeah, you're right, my bad, dude. Come on, man. I want you on this team. I want you this year. Like you're As you get older, you're starting to help pick the room too. I know that I want this guy. Why? Because he's clutch under the situation that we're going to need him. Or I need this guy. Why? Because he makes everybody laugh. Like this is everybody kind of has this role. And then all of a sudden you start bringing these young guys up with you and they start trusting you. And then it becomes really fun. And that's when you really start to take off as an O-line is when you start to grow together. You have some problems together. You get yelled at together. I mean, it's, it's really fun to watch the chemistry grow over the years and how you're like, man, we started off as teammates, but then we became brothers. And then all of a sudden it was like, no matter what, if a fight breaks out, I got your back, dude. Like no matter what, yeah. right or wrong. The old line room's different too, to the fact where like it's not necessarily the best ten, it's the right ten. Correct. Right? Like you hear that all the time. Like you gotta find your your final five, right? And sometimes it's not truly the best five players. It's the right five. Right? You have to build your old your old line room with the right players. If you have a guy that's been a starter forever and now all of a sudden you're gonna ask him to be a backup, that's not gonna work. Right? You have it like it's just like the the personality might not work in the room like that where you're like a guy that was the starter maybe got supplanted by a younger player and they're like, Hey man, you're not going to start for us this year, even though you're making starter money. Like that's going to become a problem. You can't have problems in the O-line room. You have to have things that congruently work together. And so like, there's a lot that goes into it, but Alex is right. You can, as you get older, you kind of be like, okay, I'm, we're going to need this guy. Let's help him come along. Yeah. Like we need him on this team. Or you have the young players are like, he's got no chance. I'm not going to waste my breath. Yeah. Right. Like you, you have to pick and choose because we only have so much time too as vets. Right. You only have so much time to invest in yourself and then also invest in other people. Like you got to make sure you're doing it with the right guys because otherwise it's just a waste of your time. Love right. it. Love it. And uh, yeah, keep sending us your dumb football questions. This is a safe space for us to lob <laughs> dumb football questions at these two guys. And uh, yeah, we'll 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 dig up some Jeremiah PFF fodder to, to get him going on a future episode here. If you guys <laughs> could click the subscribe button and the like button. You can help spread the word about the O-line committee, and we're going to keep dropping episodes throughout the offseason here. And uh, so if there's other topics you want us to do film reviews on or dumb questions, just send them our way. Hit us up. You can also follow O-line committee on Instagram, on uh, TikTok, and on Twitter. I think we're more active on Instagram right now. This is the crew that we have. Once we have a big, like, you know, 100-person staff, we'll pump some more content out on those platforms, but... Um, good stuff, dudes. Hey, Thanks for answering. We appreciate you guys on the, on the path to 2000 subscribers and very quickly time. We do appreciate all of you listening and watching and subscribing. So it does go notice. Thank you. Absolutely. Amen. Keep the questions coming. I feel like these questions are so PG rated. Like I want to hear some, give us something real, good. I want to give us something good. Question. Okay. Ask some non PG, some PG 13 or some R rated questions. I mean, NC 17. The NC and some 17. NC, some, some, yeah, some NC 17. What does Jeremiah look like naked? No, 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 no one needs that's to. the wrong question. That's the wrong question. All right. This is an offensive line lifestyle podcast. The O-line committee. <laughs>